contemporary music, classical music can still have successful concerts, as we can see in the uh, LA Field, Los Angeles Philharmonic, LA Field. They, they have like this uh, Green Umbrella series. So, uh, I, I talk about the attendance. It's, it's the worst attendance is 70%. Many of their concerts are sold out. And you have to be, in fact, you have to be a subscriber. You have to purchase the tickets early. Uh, the worst attendance I've seen in the Green Umbrella is 70%. So, that means there is an audience out there. Uh, it may depend on the city you are living in. Um, you, some people may say Los Angeles has a more has people who appreciate classical music. Maybe in other cities, uh, that may not happen. But uh, there's one thing I like about the Green Umbrella series. Uh, what LA Philharmonic did was uh, they do sometimes look at rock music like Frank uh, Frank Zappa. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. So Frank Zappa. They actually had a sold out concert. I think it's one of the most memor memorable concert I attended. Frank Zappa. Uh, they had this so many props. Uh, they had so many props on stage, if behind the orchestra, and I've never seen like they had like this guy dressed up as Frank Zappa, and in the <coughs> and in the middle of the music, this guy actually walks up on stage. Frank Zappa walks up on stage, and starts talking, and like. I don't know, like scolding the scolding the conductor, like all sorts of things. Like it was, it is it. It was like avant garde, yes. But it it was really unexpected. So the audience really love it because they had never experienced anything like that. And we we I can't see that in you know a, a classical baroque, uh, romantic classical yeah, concert. That, that yeah. <laughs> so. That is really exciting. I mean, that's really exciting about new music is that, uh, you know, the, the possibilities are endless. There, there are so many unexpected, uh, you know, situations. The audience, the audience themselves may be part of the performance. Uh, there, there are, uh, there's this piece, uh, there's this bassoon composer, John, I can't remember the last name. I think it's Stamitz. Uh, I, I'll look him up. Um, he he actually has the audience uh, sing at a certain point in the music, and it was it was amazing. I'll I'll put a link. Uh, I'll I'll put I'll share it uh, with this video. I'll put a link. Uh, so he he did it so well that the audience is really essential part of the performance because the performance is a dance. It's a dance music. So. It requires uh, like a congregation. Uh, I know a lot of I know there are lovers and haters of John Cage, uh, but I would I would say he gave us composers per permission yeah. to permission to really explore uh, all sounds, all sounds, and and of course now it's so common for electronic uh, electronic mu which you are studying right now electronic music. Uh, we are recording everyday sounds. We are recording. I, I actually have a composition. Uh, it's called uh, Pavlo, Pav, Pavlov's Life Cues, which is uh, recording everyday uh, sounds that trigger me, like alarms, uh, mm. doorbells, and all these like sounds that uh, sounds that shocks you. Um, like I actually put all these sounds together in, into a very logical. I would say more logical. Uh, composition and and now it's so common to record everyday sounds. We have music yeah. that uh, we have but music that I was I saw a news about uh, BBC. Oh uh, no, actually it's not BBC. So right now we recently we had the Singapore Night Festival. Uh, Singapore okay. uh, that that's like basically uh, a lot of colorful lights, uh, colorful lights in the streets of Singapore. There's actually a performance uh, where the 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 composer recorded sounds of glaciers, glaciers melting. So glaciers melting, uh, plunging, and that that performance is to tell you the seriousness of uh, global warming and global warming and climate change. So there's there's no other music. I mean, I do not know how you can express the seriousness of climate change and global warming if you are not going to record. 
these uh, sounds, like these real life, real life events, the glaciers, uh, glaciers plant, melting and plunging. So that is an excellent way to, um, to, to use everyday sounds and open up your mind. Don't, don't just think about, don't just think about orchestra instruments. Yeah. So we, we come back to the question about how to get, how to get audience into, into recital studio, concert halls, audience into exhibitions. It, it could be a installation, installation. Your music is performed as an installation. Mm -hmm. The experience of the, you know, the glaciers falling into the glaciers falling in, melting and the seriousness of global warming, which everyday people, especially, you know, in Singapore, who, like how, when are we ever going to hear glaciers? <laughs> when are we ever going to hear glaciers? You know, you have to travel to Antarctica, Greenland or yeah, you have to, Alaska. So that's one way that I, I think uh, modern composers, uh, composers, sound artists definitely have an impact. Uh, composers and sound artists definitely have uh, relevance to spread the message. And the online platform, we come back to that again, the, the YouTube online platform is, uh, is one of the best ways to, or is the best way to reach out to a global audience. Uh, we, you, you asked about, your question asked about, uh, should we just write music that is not, um, that does what we want to do, just never mind society. Yeah. Should we write music that is truly our desire and not care about audience, not care about the society? I, for me, most of my music are programmatic music. So obviously the it's not uh, the two are mu not mutually exclusive in fact uh, i achieve what i want what i want to write and what i want to write and also what impact what impact on the audience the listeners Bec that's because my music uh almost always programmatic music i find uh, programmatic music if i have a program i it's easier for me to write uh, it's an organic process. It is also more um, natural. It's more natural to, and uh, it's more relatable. The audience can relate to it. It's easier for me to write and the audience can relate to it. But if you, if you want to write non-programmatic absolute music, that is, that is also fine. Uh, that that will have uh, I would in my opinion that would be a niche uh, that would be a niche audience you mentioned earlier contemporary classical music or new classical music and how it is, it is difficult to get an audience for this for this sort of thing um, so especially when we're talking about trying to fill up a, an actual physical stage that's going to be an issue so uh, is that less of a problem online and how how in fact do you deal with this issue of contemporary classical music not not being very widespread not being very popular not being very easy to access for most people what 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 is what is the issue here so i, I give you a quick answer okay so i have uh, been part of concerts where the tickets are free mm -hmm. and it's it's like full house so it's new music <laughs> it's new music but it's free and we basically just packed the, it, it was actually the Lee, Lee Foundation Theatre. So oh, yeah, yeah. Lee Foundation Theatre, it was packed because it's a free concert. But it's a free concert of the, the Composer Society of Singapore. So it's all, it's all new music and the, it's packed. But when, um, when you want people to pay $20, $30, that, that can become... Uh, that can become a, a, a barrier because uh, people who don't usually listen to cl contemporary classical music, now they have to think about, should I be paying $30? So uh, that can be, that can affect your ticket sales. Uh, it's a very, I have, I have went, I've been through that situation where it's, you know, the, the recital studio is half, is half filled. And um, because the tickets, we have to sell it at a certain cost because uh, the rental is high. 
the rental is high, we have to pay the musicians. It was, it was really a huge headache. I, I went through that process. We have no control. Uh, we, we, have, we have no control over the audience taste. So what we can do is uh, as a programmer, if you're programming for new music, is diversity. Uh, do, do not just have a concert of avant-garde music. Do not just have a concert of, uh, you know, very soothing yoga, me meditation. Yeah, is, is it new? it's new music, but, you know, try to think about a variety that hopefully everyone in the audience have something to uh, attach to. Hopefully someone in the audience can relate to. Uh, I... For example, uh, there are pop music. There, there could be uh, husbands and wives who are there. They, they, they listen to pop music. They never listen to classical music and they are there just because of the spouse. So I, I always keep that in mind and try to, have a, try, try to think about diversity. The question about whether contemporary music is relevant today is, is not even a question at all because we I, we already talk about video games. We talk about we talk about video games. We talk about film. We talk about theater, dance. They always need new music. Since since Gregorian chants or like you know Renaissance even earlier, everyone is exploring new music. I know I'm gonna get some haters. Some 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 haters out there, but no no yeah I know I'm gonna get some haters, but uh what went wrong was the avant garde movement. Uh, I know someone some of you are gonna start bashing me, but uh what kind of went wrong with uh inverted commas when I do like avant garde some avant garde music, what went wrong was the avant garde movement, and um you know you have Boulez that you have Boulez to tell you that oh. You know, after World War Two, we have to, we have to start fresh. We have to start anew. You know, after destruction, after the destruction of World War Two, we have to start anew. We have to music. We have to start music again, all over again. Yeah, yeah. So we have this avant-garde movement. We have the Second Vienna School. We mm, have shit. um music for the for that has to be uh revolutionary. Some are good. Some I don't really relate to. I'm, I do like some of the avant-garde music. Some of the music I'm not able to relate to. So the 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 general public, or even music majors, some some music majors have this idea that 20, 21st century music is all like that. And then you have uh, Steve Reich and uh, you know Philip Glass. Yeah. And of course, many film composers that come in that show that you know you know minimalistic minimalistic movement we have all these film com composers john williams and all these people coming in john adams showing you that uh no actually it can still be new and awesome it can still be new and it can still relate to the general public the general public who still comfortable to listen to this sort of thing because it doesn't it doesn't push them outside of their it doesn't shove them too much. Yes. Yeah. Because so, the general public feels that it's too esoteric and it's too it's too esoteric, it's too foreign. I'm not I'm not gonna pay I'm I I'm I i i do not want to pay thirty dollars to there, there's this idea that oh it's a contemporary classical music concert. I'm not gonna pay thirty dollars. It's too esoteric. I'm not able to appreciate it. So how yeah. can we attract them back to yeah, how can we attract them back to the concert halls? That's a question. Uh, 